Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so here we have our regular run-of-the-mill metal Autolink Super Tone Master. I got this for $225 at a brick-and-mortar store. You see it says $229 right here, but the guy gave me a little discount because I bought a bunch of other stuff. So uh, this is right in line with what you'd pay online for one of these. So I was actually surprised that I saw this in the music store. So... I just went right on ahead and got it. So let's open this thing up and see what we got. So it comes in this plastic bag here. You get yourself a mouthpiece cap. Has auto link on it there. You get your standard auto link ligature. It has this plate that's here just unscrew that all right and we have our super tone master now I've already had a chance to play through this a little bit I put my own teeth and mouthpiece saver here I like to use the Selmer ones I also put this on backwards like this so that way I can get a wider tip on the front so let's take a closer look at this mouthpiece. I'll get to this ligature later. Like I said, I played through this mouthpiece. This table seems to be really flat. The rails are pretty standard, average size. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so I just want to take a closer look at the tip here. The left side of this rail looks a little bit different than the right side here. Now, like I said, I had a chance to play through this before and I didn't notice any abnormal playing behavior. The reed seems to fit quite nicely, but even still, you know, this is another issue that I've noticed here with this mouthpiece. So for all intents and purposes, I'm actually very pleased with this mouthpiece with the exception of this discoloration here and down here. I mean, I know this is going to spread and hopefully this is one of the things that in the future they can work on. Um, it's a little disappointing because with my modern vintage metal auto link, that thing just looks fantastic. And I know this is kind of the run of the mill one, but even still, hopefully they can step it up in the future. We have our very open chamber here. Let's take a look at this from the back. very auto linkish also something that I noticed on this mouthpiece is that it has a tiny bit of a forehead here this right here you can see how there's a slight angle change this part before the angle change I call that a forehead it just translates very easily into other languages auto link here and this is a seven you have your very standardized auto link ligature. Um, these are very love hate ligatures. I think that they kind of reinforce the auto link sound. Um, I actually kind of like these ligatures, but you make up your own mind. One of the things that I don't like about this ligature though is how this plate here turns when it's actually on the mouthpiece. And then I like to make sure that it's perfectly straight here, but. At any rate, this is exactly what you should expect when you pick up an Autolink. I wish they actually had removable plates for this, because this looks very much like one of the plates of the Van Dorn ligatures that you get. Here, right up here at the tip, you can see how it, it has what I like to call the Autolink arrow. How it starts out a little bit flat and then it just gets concave as it opens up how that inner side wall and this is very symmetrical on both sides here sorry about that light glare let's take a look at this chin area This is one of the things that I definitely look for in an auto link just to see what's going on right there to see how thick that is or how thin it is. You can see we obviously have a rounded chin area here. All right, so let's get to it. 
I'm using this silver neck here because on my other auto links I use this silver neck in another video I'm gonna do much more of a side-by-side -side comparison in case you're cross shopping auto link mouthpieces okay so let me play a little bit more <laughs> I just found a video of me from 1999 and I needed to make some pre footage just to check it out and see how it went. But ultimately the video footage wasn't good enough. The audio quality wasn't good enough. And I guess the overall performance wasn't quite what I was ready to send off to be on national TV. So I wound up reshooting it and the video that I already have on YouTube with me taking my shirt off, that's the last 30 minutes of the video I made after this one. So the one I'm going to show you guys, is the beta version of that video from 20 years ago i was in crazy shape keep in mind the video and the audio is really old i was using like vhs to record it but i am using what was the last auto link i'd used for a really really long time in the video where i have my shirt off i'm using that duke off so uh, if you look closely you can see i got like a rubber band holding my horn together and all this stuff it's old uh pre-1940s martin and i'm using an auto link eight or eight stars something like this it may be the one that i have already so check this out <laughs>
Okay, before I was in the purple room, now I'm in the red room. to get into the Autolink family. It's a great starting point. A lot of people have worked on these mouthpieces. There are a lot of people that work on mouthpieces that would be very, very familiar with how to adjust this to your liking. So it very much is kind of the timeless classic, so to speak. I'll just kind of go over a few things that I like about it and a few things that I don't. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so I just want to do a quick recap here because all intents and purposes, I am very happy with this mouthpiece. I think it's priced just about right. Obviously, I am not pleased with the defects that are here, but as far as its playability, I am. it is exactly what I was expecting to get from a mouthpiece. Actually, the biggest issue that I had with it is the ligature. Now, usually Autolink ligatures, like I said before, are hit or miss. I generally like the Autolink ligature. I just didn't like this one in particular. My other one, that's the same model, I liked it. So obviously pick whatever ligature you want. I have a variety of ligatures that fit this mouthpiece quite easily. So uh, aside from that, I think that because of the generic quality of this mouthpiece, it's led for other mouthpiece makers to pretty much just kind of copy it and improve on it. So there are so many mouthpiece makers that have basically copied links and may put their own personal stamp on it so uh, this is the original for better or for worse and i definitely wanted to get a seven something that's much more comfortable to play than my eight star mouthpiece which was just too open i still believe this to be the industry standard because so many people have played on these mouthpieces and we still transcribe those solos of people that have played on these mouthpieces it is really a fantastic and not too expensive way to get going on a tenor saxophone a very no excuses way to get going all right ladies and gentlemen that's all i got for you stay tuned